Hey guys, we're here at the 2024 Goodwood Festival of Speed with BMW Classic because they have an entire suite of cars here to show us and one of them is right behind us. But before we dive into this one, I have here Mark from BMW Classic. He knows everything there is to know about classic cars at BMW and especially about this one. Of course, there with me here, Sean from Precision Sport Industries. He's gonna dive in with some questions about the history of the car and other things with classic cars as well. So let's go with the BMW Garmisch. When did this project come to life? Well, in fact, many years ago, our head of BMW Group Design, Adrian van Hoydonk, saw an old picture of this car, and he was fascinated about the car. Soon later, the idea was, was created to, wow, we have to rebuild it, because behind the story is a, is a very strange story. Okay. The car was presented in the early 70s at Geneva Auto Show. After the presentation, it was gone, and nobody knew where the car is, so it is lost. Okay. It's a lost one. And so because of the story, Mr. Adrian van Hoedong decided, well, we need to rebuild the car because it's such a great car. A lost car was reborn again. How does that work? Because I'm assuming the car was lost. How did you manage to replicate the exact car? It was a difficult task because we didn't have much photographs, much archive stuff, much mm -hmm. sketches or anything like that. So it was more or less a black and white page and nothing else. The challenge was the photographs we had were black and white. So it was quite difficult to find out the real colors and all the stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But in the end, um, Mr. Gandini helped us a lot. He has a very good brain and he was remembering a lot of stuff from back then. So in cooperation with Gandini, with the design department of BMW, uh, Bertone at Torino, it was possible to rebuild the car, but it was not easy. Now, let's talk a little bit about the design of the car and you can jump into some of the technical sure. questions like around engine and all of that. But tell me how this the BMW Garmisch differentiate from any other BMW designs because you know it's supposed to have this Italian flair a little bit and all of that. Can you speak to that maybe a little bit? Even in the early 30s, BMW cooperated with Italian design uh, studios. For example, BMW 328, Carrosseria Touring in, at Milano. So we have a long heritage with Italian design studios. And in the 60s especially, we cooperated with Bertone. In a first step, for example, with the BMW 3200 CS, which was launched in 1961. Back then, the design studios tried to make deals with the companies, with the car manufacturers, with presenting and creating new cars, prototypes, one-offs. So this is one of these one-offs. And if we take a look from a nowadays perspective, this car was very futuristic. And even nowadays, you can find elements in this car we are still using. So it's amazing. Like which ones? Because now I'm curious. Which ones would you see on this car that we see on other BMWs today? Would you like to join to the front? Yeah, let's take a look at the front, yeah, actually. Of course, the kidney, the kidney. Is, is smaller. But if you take a look at the M3 or M4, it's somehow kind of this kidney, in my opinion, you know? Yeah. And, and if you take a look at the Lightnings, in the 3 Series F30, the Lightnings for the first time were close to the kidney. Yeah. And if we talk about the BMW 5 Series, which was launched in 1972, you can find also elements in the 5 Series. So, for example, please join me. Sure. This element, for example, is in the E12 and later on yeah. a little bit in a different way in the E28. And the whole silhouette, the whole style, was used by BMW later on for very important series. And even the Hofmeister King, right? I mean, you can see it right there. Well, you know, Hofmeister, yeah, it was the time of Mr. Hofmeister, you yeah, know? True, right? Yeah, it's true, yeah. I'm still shocked to see it on cars because you don't see it on many cars today. So I'm like, oh, you know, those are the old times, but uh, very, so, very interesting. And I mean, I believe this is built on the chassis of a 2002. Exactly. I believe. And then I believe it would still retain the M10 engine. Absolutely. Well. It's In fact, it's a TII, but we name it TI. Any reason why they used the 2002 engine? Just because it was small enough to fit in this car? Back in the days, it was okay. the same basis for the car. So so that's that's the reason why. Yeah. So I've spent so much time in Munich the last 10, 15 years, and now I'm kind of familiar with the surroundings uh, around Munich. And one of them is Garmisch, the iconic ski resort. You know, the Olympics were there. Was the name of that resort an inspiration for the name of the car? Exactly. It is the main reason and the only reason for the naming. Because back then, Garmisch was a sort of society town. The rich and the famous people have been meeting at Garmisch. Yeah. And Mr. Gandini and, and BMW have been inspired about this topic, about Garmisch, about the lifestyle, and they wanted to create a sort of luxury car. So yeah, it was, Garmisch back then was St. Moritz of today maybe, so it was a very, very important place to be. Now, if we look back to 2019 when the car was unveiled at Villa d'Este, 
clearly was sort of a surprise because we're so used to seeing concept car there and all these crazy cars. What was the reaction of people seeing the car there, but also why did you decide to bring it to Villa d'Este? We, we have to step back into the very early days of the Concorso Villa d'Este because when it started in 1929, it was more or less a new car exhibition. Prototypes as well, design studies for the future because in 1929 there has not been much heritage in yeah. automotive inter industry. The core of the Concorso d'Eleganza is presenting new cars. Nowadays it's more like a historic concours. And this is the reason why we always take prototypes, one-offs like this, for example, to the Concorso to keep the history alive. And nowadays we are combining, of course, the past, the present and the future. Why we put this car to Concorso is, in my opinion, maybe Lake Como nowadays could be nearly the same like Garmisch back then. Yeah. So it, it, it's sort of matching. Fancy place, a lot of cool exactly. people going there, yeah, all yeah, that, yeah, understood. Yeah. Should we go to the back? Maybe we talk a little bit more about the car and design features, technology and all of that. Clearly you can see the Garmisch name and you retained the 2002 Ti, so that was on the original car as well, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah, if you take a look at the, at the back, there is a very typical element of Mr. Gandini. You have, you have these elements in the rear window. It's typical for Gandini back then. Okay. It is nothing that BMW adapted for the future, of course, mm -hmm. but for this car, it's fitting pretty much good. So. Yeah. During any restoration or recreation of a vintage car or classic BMW, how do you source a part of something that there isn't another car in existence? There yeah. isn't parts on the shelf. For the normal O2 series, we have <laughs> a lot of spare parts, but sure. for this one especially, with very special parts, one-off parts, mm -hmm. We use, for example, 3D printings 3D to print. recreate them. We are future, future open for 3D printings and we are happy to have this possibility. Were there any people that wanted to buy the car right off the bat at uh, Villa Desta? Of course. Yeah. Did, they, did they mention like price or anything? Like, I mean, it's priceless, clearly. No, 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 I, I'm not talking about prices, <laughs> but I can assure that this car will never leave the BMW collection. So it's always going to be there. Were there any other novelties uh, inside and outside the car? So I guess, the one that I know is the radio, and I guess the vertical radio, yeah, yeah. and then fold-up mirrors, something you can talk about. You named it. Um, I mean, there's more that I just don't know about. A, a vertical radio was the first time, in my opinion, in automotive history. And, and the mirror is very special because Mr. Gandini thought, wow, a gentleman is driving his car and his wife should be lucky as well. So I installed a large mirror, yeah. <laughs> which is coming out of the glove department. Yeah, so yeah. These are the main two fun facts from the interior design perspective, yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen the leather. Actually, I've seen it, the car at the uh, Villa Des, but I don't remember if the leather was vintage aged or is it like brand new leather? It's new leather. Okay. It's no, no vintage leather. And by the way, uh, Mr. Gandini remembered the exact color. And only because of his remembering, we were able to rebuild the leatherings and all the interior colors like it is. Like this. That's amazing. So how does a project like this start? Because I'm, I'm always fascinated by the design projects at BMW. I, I know the concept cars and all of that, but this starts in the design studio and then it moves to classic? Or is it a separate location where you guys work on things like this? Okay, this one is special. First, I would like to mention that BMW still gives all the designers and mechanics the room to be creative, the room to be crazy. Mm -hmm. An idea is born and, well, several people say it's a good idea, just do it. This possibility is very important for BMW to, to be able to think to the future. In fact, this car was built in Munich from the BMW design studio, but also in Turin with Bertone in a, in a, in a close cooperation. Gotcha. So the main parts have been manufactured actually at Torino in Italy. And afterwards, we have the, the task to keep the heritage. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why BMW Group Classic is coming to the game in a late stage, because mm -hmm. the company wants us to take, a, to take care of, okay. the, of the car. So it's now in our collection. And we use every opportunity, just like here at the Festival of Sweden Goodwood, to show the car. Especially this year, well, it's a sad year because Mr. Gandini passed away. Mm -hmm. We yes. do it with even more love, you know? Of course. We want to keep this heritage alive, not only ours, but also his. So a special project like this, how long does it normally take, especially in collaboration with Bertone, to create something like this? It takes months. And in, in this case, it's very special. It took only four months to rebuild this car, considering that you didn't have any sketches, any materials, anything. So it was it was a massive task and they delivered in only four months. But this was only able because of the close cooperation between Bertone, between Torino, Bertone, Munich. Every department has been involved. Also, by the way, the BMW Group archives, because the little material we had was located in the archives. So that plays an important role, actually, in preserving the history of BMW, but also being yeah. able to go back in time and get things yeah. to reproduce. 
Now, let's talk a little bit about, more about Villa Des, right? I mean, I've been there the last few years. I mean, I've been telling Sean about the event. It's such a great event. So, so cool to see the cars there, but also the BMW cars. What does it mean for BMW Classic having this platform, this Villa Des platform for so many decades? In my personal opinion, it's one of the greatest events in the world. Mm -hmm car events in the yeah. world. In Europe it's the best. I think there's nothing comparable in Europe. And we are proud to keep the history alive. It's not always easy nowadays to keep the history alive, you know. Mm -hmm. But sure. the, the company gives us this role full of trust mm -hmm. and we are trying to deliver. We are trying to keep the history alive. So we are very proud in the end. So do you have any previews of some other resurrected classic BMWs that may be in the future, maybe presented at Villa de Este in the future? I can't name but I can maybe assure that every year at the Concorso will be a great one. I think yeah. this topic is established and we need this topic also. Yeah. Curious for next year maybe. So we have something in the pipeline. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so not to keep it too long, but another question about BMW Classic. So we were just there two, three weeks ago, you know, thank you for letting us in. Yeah. Some amazing cars. I mean, I see the Z3 V12 did great everybody loved that idea when you're walking into that facility you know every time that i walk in there are new things there are all the things that i've seen but it's always so fascinating being there what are some of your highlights like personal highlights from that entire collection maybe things that i've never wow. seen before so let's say i know it's a tough question like picking your favorite child but if you were to name maybe let's see three favorite cars that you've come across in the bmw classic in the normal area and also in the secret area as well all right in the in the normal area it's all dealing with the E46 actually. In the okay. normal area it would be the E46 CSL. Okay. In the more secret area it would be the E46 M3 GTR with the 8 cylinder engine. Okay. So I'm very much focused on E46. <laughs> and 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 beside that it's a, such a difficult question. What I like most, you know, I have two small children, I have a dog, I have mm -hmm. a wife. I would prefer the BMW X5 Le Mans. Uh, of course, I have enough yeah. space. Oh, yeah. I yeah. have massive power. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun car, maybe. If I would be able to choose, I would take this one. But I need a street license. That yeah. might be difficult. So one of the questions that I got on my videos, maybe on yours as well, it's also a lot of people asking is how, how can I see the collection of BMW Classic? Of course, they can go to the website and look it up. But essentially, anybody can book a tour to see the collection there, right? Exactly, yeah. It's, it's a sort of limited and restricted, but okay. in, in normal cases, everyone is able to book a guided tour. Not only for the Classic, also for the museum, for example. Mm -hmm. But it's not an area where you can walk in and walk out uh, as you like because yeah. it's also a working space for us. Sure. But yes, the fans and we are serving the fans mm -hmm. are able to book tours for the BMW Classic as well. Yeah, We in the Classic department are feeling right now very much appreciated because of the Neue Klasse project for example. The exactly. company shows everyone we are dealing with our past mm -hmm. and this yeah. is the sort of yeah, cool yeah. stuff for us. And yeah. really the last point, promise, the last question. Okay. I will say that, you know, I will say that. And then like 10 minutes later, we're still here. But, you know, you deal a lot with restorations on BMW cars as well. And clearly you're doing it at a different level. But how is that, you know, business developing for you? Or what does it mean for the classic, also for the customers? And maybe some of the things that you offer that, that nobody else does. It's very important for us to serve any customer's need. Uh, so we have a good uh, part department who is trying to deal with every wish. But to be honest, it's sometimes difficult to fulfill any wish because there are so many special parts, so many special cars, special topics. But in the end, we are trying our best and it's also a very good running business for us as well. We are trying the best we can, but, but I know the rumors outside of BMW are oh, you cannot deliver this part and that part. We are trying to solve any problems we have, but it's sometimes a sort of tricky, you know. Great. Well, it's amazing to know that you're working on it because so a lot of people out there, they're looking for that one part that they need to finish their car. Yeah. And it's great to know that you guys at least have that thought and at least trying to solve that problem. Yeah, we are trying to get in contact with our customers and fans, our club and community management. We have a special department for dealing with the customers and fans and we are always talking to them. What do you need? What We cannot promise that we fulfill any wish just only because you said I need this. But in the end, we are trying, yeah, and, and you, you can try till you till you die, you know. Yeah, of course. And don't go anywhere because we're gonna jump into the racing classic cars. We're gonna see some exciting one there with the uh, 318 by Johnny Cecotto. Then there is also the V12 LMR and the 2002 uh, TIK. So lots of things to cover. We'll see you in the next video.